Amen. In nomine Patris, et Fidi, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Brethren in Christ, live there to Jesus Christus in secula. This is Timothy Flanders of the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Happy, great feast of St. John. It's a glorious day to be a Catholic. It's a wonderful, wonderful time. It's uh, one of my favorite feasts. Uh, and I'm recording this. This is a recording. This is not live because I have just spent presumably if if uh, god willing our plans succeed we've been partying like it's 1999 in the year of our lord jesus christ in his reign 2024 uh we've got our annual bonfire for saint john the baptist and i'll explain all that in just a minute but first let's talk about the fact that we're in this great week the fifth week after pentecost which is depicted here beautifully, of course, by Michaela Harrison. And so we have the fifth Sunday of after Pentecost. The vigil of St. John the Baptist takes place on the Saturday before. So if you're pre-55, um, that's important. And now in, in this week, we actually have one of the vigils that survive, the traditional vigils that survive the 62 Missal. We'll get back to that in just a minute. So we've got the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. And one of the great things about this is that there is a common theological opinion that St. John the Baptist was, in fact, born without original sin. And that's because, as the Holy Ghost says, he would be filled, St. John the Baptist would be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. And so this is understood by some theologians that he was cleansed from original sin at the visitation. So when St. Elizabeth felt him leap for joy, he was leaping for joy because Jesus in the womb was sanctifying John in the womb and cleansing him from original sin. And as we know, Saint our Lord himself said that there among those born of women, there is not risen a greater than John the Baptist. So there are three different births celebrated by the church. Typically, martyrs are called their birthday, which is the date of their death. Right. We have St. John and Paul here on Wednesday. So they have martyr palms. And that's the 26th is their birthday, meaning their their birth into eternal life, their death day. But there's three natural births celebrated. Obviously, Christmas, our Lord. We have September 8th, the Nativity of Theotokos. And then we also have St. John's birthday. And so those are the three people in history who were born without original sin. So we have these holy births. And we'll talk a little about that in just a minute. And over here, then, as I said, we have the vigil feast. So what's great about this is a, this is another triduum. There's there's multiple triduums. Obviously, it's the, the main triduum of, of the Paschal mystery at, at Good Friday, Easter, etc. But there's also other triduums. There's, for example, there's the Pentecost triduum. Vigil of Pentecost, Pentecost, Pentecost Monday. There's the All Souls triduum the uh, Vigil of All Souls, Halloween, and we have All Saints, All Souls. And we also have a Peter and Paul Triduum, which is the Vigil of Peter and Paul, St. Peter and Paul, which is in particular that day celebrates St. Peter. And then we have St. Paul that happens on the 30th. So 28, 29, and 30. And there's a traditional fast that goes all the way up to Saints Peter and Paul. But before we talk more about this great time of year, just want to re recommend to everybody 
tell you what's going on with Meaning of Catholic. We have the uh, St. Joseph Dialogos. We just had an interview with His Excellency Bishop Athanasius Snyder um, talking about his newest book. He just released a new book, Flee from Heresy. So we talk with him so you can access this podcast by joining the guild at meaningofcatholic.com slash register. And if you haven't already noticed, we have transitioned Meaning of Catholic to an almost entirely guild-supported apostolate. So we are creating content for our guild members. So the only free podcast is really this Monday morning podcast. We also have the uh, the occasional Bible podcast and the occasional uh, Father's Bookshelf podcast. But the main podcast, you cannot access these unless you're a guild subscriber. So you can go to meaningofcatholic.com slash register but this is not about just buying a product we want we're looking for pious souls who can join our apostolate and do penance for clergy and seminarians who can invoke our patrons to unite catholics against the enemies of the holy church so that's why we ask for people to be also financially invest because that that helps us understand and establish a relationship of trust where we know that you're you are not just here as you know a commentator to just get free content you're here because you want to contribute something. You want to invest in this apostolate. And it's a collaborative apostolate. So all of our creators, we support them too. We're trying to build up financial support for them too, like Cavazos, Fowler, et cetera. We have another edition of our Ratzinger party coming in August. Uh, so that'll be um, the Logos Project. Richard DeClue will be discussing Ratzinger's political philosophy. So you cannot access that discussion unless you're a guild member of Meaning of Catholic or a supporter of any of these creators and contributors. So that's the way Meaning of Catholic works. All of our podcasts are subscribers only with a few exceptions. And then all we can release is just these previews. So one of them is Bishop Schneider on his latest text. And then we also have the trad disputed questions. So this is an ongoing series between myself and Cavazos. We are both traditionalists, but we come from different perspectives. And this week's topic is ecclesiology. And this is just the introduction because it's such a huge topic. So we'll talk about the ecclesiology. So my view is that Vatican II is in fact a traditional ecclesiology. It's actually restoring a pre-Tridentine uh, ecclesiology. And uh, Cavazos uh, essentially takes the position of the SSPX uh, which would critique the ecclesiology of Vatican II. So if you want that full discussion, you have to go to meaningofcatholic.com slash register, or you can also go to patreon.com slash traditional Thomist to access that. So let's talk about why this feast day is fantastic. Well, first of all, Saint, as I, we already talked about how great St. John the Baptist is. There is an open theological question as to who is the greater saint, St. John the Baptist or St. Joseph. Some say St. Joseph, that we owe him uh, proto-dulia, as we are Our Lady hyperdulia, which is the highest dulia, but then proto-dulia is the highest after that, basically. So he's second to Our Lady. We all know either whoever is the best is second to Our Lady. We all know that. But is it St. John the Baptist or is it St. Joseph? But I won't comment on that. What I want to comment on the fact that this coincides with the summer, summer solstice. So there's various pre-Christian traditions of that. Um, I say pre-Christian because there's a distinction between pre-Christian pagan things and post-Christian pagan things. Because the neo-paganism today is anti-Christian and there's nothing, nothing can be done about that. It just needs to be baptized and cleansed from all its demonic content. Whereas the pre-Christian pagan reality it also needed to be content uh, to uh, cleanse of its demonic content, but there was a redemption. We, we just mentioned Halloween. There's, there's pre-Christian customs regarding that. There's also pre-Christian customs regarding the solstice. So what we love to do as a family is that we take our Christmas tree and we store it under the deck and it sits there for six months. And then when this great feast day comes along, we pull out the Christmas tree, we set it up in the bonfire area, and then we light up the Christmas tree, which is always exciting because it, 
it, if you've never done that before, it um, burns all up at like a big firework, basically. And it's uh, lots of fun for the kids. And then we eat s'mores and have a big bonfire. Let the kids stay up as late as they want because it's the one of the it's not technically the the astronomical summer solstice. So it's not technically the longest day of the year, but it's close enough. And obviously the co the coinciding is with Christmas. So it's six months until Christmas. And in the same way as St. John said, he must increase and I must decrease. The light, the natural light will decrease and decrease and decrease so that the world will get darker and darker and darker until Christmas. And then Christmas begins the increase of the light. So it's just a beautiful feast, lots of fun, tons of stuff to do with the kids and uh, a great summer festival, a great way to invite your neighbors over. Let's have a bonfire. Oh, and by the way, we're going to bless this bonfire. There's a traditional blessing for the bonfire. If you go to onepeter5.com right now, the article is from Matthew Pleasy. So this is Matthew Pleasy wrote a book that we published called Restoring Lost Customs of Christendom. This text is one of the most important in uh, this concept of customs is one of the most important in this book I, I hold is one of the most important thereof because Pleasy is taking a lot of different texts and a lot of different traditions and customs and putting it together. This is what's great about being Catholic. That, that we we throw the best parties because we're, we have true spiritual joy, first of all, where we can truly have true spiritual joy, and then we can enjoy the, the blessings that God has given us in a truly moderate way, not like the pagans, but in a way that gives glory to God with true spiritual joy and also natural joy. So if you go to that article at 1peter5.com, you can get the traditional blessing at here's the this is the article right here so if you go to that we have the traditional blessing right here um and it says bless this new fire and grant that after the darkness of this life we may come unsullied to thee etc etc so it's a great custom lots of fun great way to evangelize your your neighbors so i'm just going to go over a few other things in the article um the, one of the crazy things that Pleasy mentions is that this is really one of the really big feast days of the year, which has really been obscured, unfortunately. Excuse me. So you have the fasting for the vigil of St. John. And then you have, uh, as we talked about, the St. John Bob fighters. And then uh, there's some other customs mentioned. Uh, make a wreath of flowers that draw that dry well and hang in your home all year to be replaced next St. John's day. Alternatively, flowers can be tied together in bunches with beautiful ribbons and hanged upside down to decorate your home all year. Swedish girls pick seven flowers from seven different fields and place them under their pillows on this night. So they will dream about their future husbands. And in Slavic countries, such as Poland, floral wreaths are floated down the river in honor of Christ's baptism by St. John in the Jordan. It's wonderful. So then we also have the fact that, this used to be a holy day of obligation. And please, he notes how it it remained a holy day of obligation for many years when there actually a lot of other ones were falling off. And it's also traditionally celebrated with three masses. Just like Christmas, the birth of Christ has three masses. The birth of John also has three masses. And then there's also an octave. So it, it's really a great big feast. And it's a great time to be a Catholic. And uh, please, he also mentions, I, I've never even heard of this before, that there is a litany of St. John the Baptist, a private use litany. So you can take a look at that as well. And if you didn't, didn't do your bonfire last night, it's okay. It's not too late. There's a whole octave. Just set up a bonfire sometime this week. Get the kids together, eat some s'mores, invite your neighbors, bring your favorite summer brew. And let's celebrate St. John the Baptist. Let's celebrate the, the glory of Christ and the joy of being Catholic, the joy of the faith. So that's all we have because I'm going to get back to my celebration of St. John the Baptist. Let's invoke our patron here at Meaning of Catholic and let's pray. Nomine Patris, Efidi, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tuum liadibus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. 
Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc ut in hora mortis nostrae. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Mary, Queen of the Home, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Terror of Demons, pray for us. Saint Anthony of the Desert, pray for all clergy and seminarians. Saint John the Forerunner, pray for us. In nomine Patris, et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Jesus is King. Amen.